welcome back to the physics class so in this class we are going to study the very important concept that is the tangent law and based on that tangent law only we are going to study the helmholtz galvanometer okay and uh, because we are going to use the principle of this uh, tangent law in the helmholtz galvanometer only because we are going to use the deflection magnetometer okay moreover tangent galvanometer and the deflection galvanometer both are working under the principle of this tangent law itself only okay so uh, right now just to look at here what is this uh, tangent law okay simply right now if i had considered the one magnet or else the bar magnet i can suspend that uh, magnet to the two uniform magnetic fields which are, i had considered b and bh of which uh, which one at its right angles to each other the magnet comes to rest at an angle theta so for example right now what i will make right now i will consider just to assume that this is the magnet okay and with respect to that right now what i am going to consider this is uh, i will consider this is the magnetic field uh, due to this uh, magnet okay bar magnet and this thumb what that will represent that is the bh it mean to be what horizontal of an uh, earth magnet i can take that one as the bh and this is the b and with respect to that what i will do i can suspend this magnet into this in these two uniform magnetic fields okay but in, in this in this moment what will happens at the certain time at an angle theta the this magnet it will be uh, comes to the rest okay so that's why that angle i can take that one as the theta okay so right now if you want to represent by the, this one by graphically i can take here this one as the as i had told you this one is the bh okay and this is what the magnetic field and these two magnetic fields are what in the uniform magnetic fields both are okay and right now here this magnet which is comes to the uh, rest at the angle theta okay i know here with respect to this what i have to consider means i need to take the normal zero to the p in the equilibrium okay here this is this uh, magnetic field is due to the ma uh, bar magnet or else any other okay and this bh is what due to the horizontal of this earth magnet okay and right now here this is i consider this one as the bh and i can take this one as the m what m they represents that is the strength of the magnetic field okay and right now here as i said that these are a uh, right angle to each other okay so to that reason what i am going to write it in equilibrium in equilibrium i can write this one as b by bh that is equals to tan theta or else i can take this one as sin uh, sin 90 minus theta i can read it this one as the tan theta tan theta is that right so that's why i can write this one as b is equals to bh into tan theta this is what all about the tangent law is that right simply how we are going to define this one means how we are going to state this one means when a small magnet is uh, suspended in a two uniform magnetic fields b and bh okay which are at its right angles to each other is that right okay and the magnet comes to the rest rest at the angle theta so where that i can write this one as right uh, how i am going to write this one as the b is equals to bh tan theta is that right and where that i can write this one as like this is that right see here this is angle theta and now i can take this one as what well. this is the bh already we know and this is what the b is that right and now here i can write this one as in the expression format like this b is equals to bh tan theta what this expression will gives you it will gives you an meaning of an tangent law okay i know here by using this tangent law only we are going to explain and describe the helmholtz galvanometer in this galvanometer we are going to use the deflection magnetometer and moreover we are going to use this uh, uh, law in the tangent galvanometer also already we have studied that one and right now we are going to concentrate on this helmholtz galvanometer okay i know here in this helmholtz galvanometer the very important parameters 
I, we are going to consider the two circular coils. I can take that one as a C1 coil 1 and the coil 2 here. Okay, and now here, these two circular coils are having the same radius. Okay, and these coils are involved the number of turns also. Okay, and now here, O1 and O2, what they will represent, that will represent the center of these two coils. Okay, and now with respect to these coils, the current is flowing in the same direction for the both the coils. Is that right? And moreover, here M, what that will represent, as I said it earlier, that will give you a deflection magnetometer. Okay, and that is also what center of these two coils. Okay, and now here, this I can write this A, what that will represent, that is the distance between these two circular coils okay and now here what you have to go uh, what you are going to find in this helmholtz galvanometer means how it will work okay and right now as i said that uh, which is based on the principle of a tangent uh, law as uh, as we already discussed this one okay and right now here i am going to consider the how you are going to find the uh, magnetic field and already in the previous class we have discussed that uh, the magnetic field along the axis in the current carrying circular coil already we got that expression okay by taking that expression i am going to find that that is x is equals to what we are going to get it here okay so let us take that uh, expression already what we know that So right now, the magnetic field along the axis current carrying circular coil, for that expression I can write B is equals to mu naught by 4 pi Ni A square whole divided by A square plus X square to the power 3 by 2. Am I right? And now here, you have to know that I can take this expression as a 1. Okay? And uh, already you know that the, what is the physical meaning of all the parameters here. Here what that will represent you. That is the number of turns. And I what that will show you the flowing of a current with those two uh, circular coils. Okay? And A what that will represent. That will represent the distance between. Actually, I, I have to consider this one as the A also. Okay? What that will show you. That is the radius of that circular coil okay and whole divided by a square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 and which is only you know that this is a constant parameter okay oh sorry this is what actually this is a mu naught by 2 okay what we got it in the previous uh, class okay and now here by using this expression i am going to uh, take a use of this uh, expression here we have to know that as I said that here we have to as I said that here we have to consider the or we have to apply the uniform magnetic field. Is that right? So due to that reason, due to the uniform magnetic field, I can take this one as dB by dx that is a constant. Is that right? So that's why I can write d square by dx square is equals to 0. Am I right? And from that, let us see here what we are, what we are getting it here. Okay? Only we know the expression of this magnetic field. Okay? Along the axis. Or else on the axis. And now here, I can make the differentiation of the first equation. What we are having b is equals to all that RHS parameters. So just to differentiate with respect to the x. So what you are, what you are getting it here? Here, mu naught by 2 n i a square. These are the constant parameters. Okay, take it outside. And from that, I can differentiate this term. Okay, just to take it into the numerator, it will give you a minus 3 by 2. And from that, what you will get? Minus 3 by 2 into a square plus x square 
to the power minus 5 by 2 and again the differentiation of x squared you will get 2x and now to get cancels and now we are meaning with this term that is dv by dx that is equals to mu naught n i a square whole divided by 2 and here I can write this one as a minus 3 and now a square plus x square to the power minus 5 by 2 into x okay so after differentiating with respect to the x we got this expression is that right and now here what I will do I write here only so Again, what I have to get is right now I got the dv by dx by uh, dx term, and now I have to get this uh, d square b by dx square. Okay, and from that again differentiate with respect to x here, and from this I can take this, this one as equation two. Again differentiate the equation two with respect to x, and from that we will get d square b by dx square. That is equals to again you are having the constant parameters minus 3 by 2 mu naught n i a square okay and now here I can just to make the differentiation of these two parameters what we are having already I can write this one as a square plus x square to the power minus y by 2 and here x is the differentiation of x it will be the one okay and plus differentiate this term again first term I can write this one as minus 5 by 2 into a square plus x square to the power minus 7 by 2 ok and again what we are having x square is there I write it here that is 2x and into again you are having the another x is that right and now I can write this one as the 2x square. Okay, and right now again simplify this uh, above step. So what do we get it here? Minus of take it inside. Okay, so from that I can write this one as 3 by 2 mu naught n i a square. Okay. And now take the, uh, take this parameter outside a square plus x square to the power minus seven by two. So that will give you a square plus x square to the minus seven by two outside. And from that you are remaining with a square plus x square, right? And now here. I can take this one as the minus okay and plus of what we are having here you are having and 2 to get cancels okay and simply you are remaining with 5 into x square that's it is that right and now here see here minus a square minus x square plus of 5 x square and again simplify this one 3 by 2 mu naught n i a square a square plus x square to the power minus 7 by 2 I can write this one as 4 x square minus of a square am I right and now here see here so already what we know that d square b by dx square it will be the 0 ok and from that I can take that is equals to 0 so now I can rewrite this expression as like this 4x square minus of a square that is equals to 0 and from that what we have to get it here simply I will get it here x is equals to a by 2. 
Okay, and now here, what it will give you? What is the conclusion of this uh, this term? X is equals to a by two. What it will give you means this deflection magnetometer must be center of this two circular points. And another thing is what this it must be what half of this distance. Right now, if I had considered the radius as like this, here with respect to this, I have to take the distance between this deflection magnetometer and as well as the center of this circular point is must and should a by two. And here with respect to the second circular point, here also must and should you we should have to take that one as the a by two only. This is what the conclusion of this parameter. That is what we got by using this all this derivation. That is what x is equals to a by two here. Okay, this uh, magnetic needle point. This must be what center of these two points. And from that also what we got it here. This distance between this uh, um, deflection magnet magnetometer and the center of this circular point, which is equals to the radius of this circular point. Okay, and now here, what we got it here? X is equals to a by two. Okay, and now here, again I will take the another uh, next term. That is what? How much the current will flow through these coils? Okay, so just to look at here, what we are getting? This is what what we got it here. X is equals to a by two. Okay, and now here I will go with next step that is current through the circular coils. Okay, and here I have to consider the and even though I have to take the both the coils. And with respect to that, you need to find the how much the current will be passes. Okay, so that's why I can take this one as B is equal to so B dash is equal to two into B F. Okay, I will simply consider this one as the B dash is equal to two because here I am going to consider the these two points, okay. And with respect to that, what I have to get it here? That is, I can take that one as the BDH is equals to two V. Okay. And right now, even though already we know that the magnetic field on the axis of current carrying the circular coil, I'll write that expression already. You know that that is B is equals to mu naught by two into n i a square by a square plus x square to the power. Three by two already. What we know this, and now here, what we are having here, that is n i a square divided by a square plus x square to the power three by two, and here what we are having V dash is equals to two. Is that it? So now I can take this one as a two means two to get cancelled. And finally, I will get remaining with the mu naught n i a square by a square plus x square to the power three by. Okay, and now here, what we got here? This is what the B dash. I like this one as the B dash. Okay, and now here, this is the uh, this is the expression. Take this one as a equation three. Okay, this is the continued part of that the previously what we got that x is equals to a by two. Okay, and now here, what you have to get here, you are going to find, and your aim is to find the current. Is that right? So that's why what you will do here again, you can take that one as, or else before going to that, I can take, I can substitute x is equals to. A by two in this equation because already we got that how much I have to take this x. 
Is that right? So that's why simply substitute x is equals to a by 2 and from that what you will get it here? This expression will give you b dash is equals to mu naught n i a square whole divided by a square plus what you are having a by 2 whole square to the power 3 by 2 and now what it will give you I can write it here only that is mu naught n i a square whole divided by a square plus a square by 4 4 a square plus a square 5 a square by 2 to the power 3 by 2 am I right? got it now again simplify this one so where that I can write this one as p dash is equals to now mu naught n i a square I can write it here h 2 to the power 3 by 2 I can write that one as what this is 2 square 2 to the cancel and 2 to the power 3 and that will give you 8 taken to the numerator that will give you 8 mu naught n i a square whole divided by 5 a square is there how we are going to write that one that will give you 5 root 5 into a cube square is it to the cancel and you are remaining with a cube and 5 root by again that will give you a 3 by 2 itself only is that right and now here a square and square will get cancelled and you are remaining with a only okay and from that I can write this one as 8 mu naught n i 4 divided by 5 root 5 into a is that right and now here again just to I will rewrite this one as like this how you are going to write I can write this one as i is equals to so you are remaining with 5 root 5 into a b dash whole divided by 8 n mu naught Is that right? Okay. And now again what I will do here. I can take the use of a tangent law. As I said earlier. What we know the tangent law? We are having the tangent law like this. That is. B is equals to. BH. And theta. Is that right? Okay. And now this is what I can consider this B dash. For the both the coils. Okay, and now here I will consider the b dash as a b or else b dash is equals to bh tan theta. And now substitute this parameter in this equation, in this expression. Okay, and from that what you will get it here? This expression will give you 5 root 5 a into bh tan theta and now whole divided by h n mu naught and this is what the final expression for this current through the circular coils okay so how much what, how much we got it here i is equals to 5 root by uh, root 5 into a b h tan theta whole divided by h n mu naught and again I can rewrite this word as like this that is i is equals to k into tan theta so here this uh, k what that we represent that is the reduction factor what that we represents that is the reduction factor and this is what 
the final expression with respect to this Helmholtz galvanometer. Okay, finally we got the expression like this that is I is equals to phi root phi A B H tan theta whole divided by H n mu naught. And finally I can make this one as a very simple form that is I is equals to K tan theta K what that will represent that is what all about the reduction factor. Okay, and now here, after this, just I shown this these graphs. What these these two graphs will represent? Just to look at here, these two peaks will give you a maximum strength of the magnetic field. With respect to this coil one, that will gives you this first peak. And with respect to the strength of the magnetic field of with respect to this coil that will give you here. Okay. And with respect to that, what that will show you, this A, what that will show you? The equidistance between these two peak points or else the strength of this magnetic field maximum, which is the maximum. Is that right? And it will show you the magnetic field is, is it in the uniform condition okay and now here if you want to write it in the resultant parameter means you may just to look at here it will give you like this is that right see with respect to this coil here you are having the maximum magnetic field the strength of the magnetic field is very high and if you go through the uh, far from these these coils what it will give you it will give you a very decreased form of magnetic field and in the similar way, if you come across this first magnetic field, what that will show you? That will show you the same uh, working condition as uh, that will be done in the second coil. Here also it will show you a maximum strength of magnetic field. Again, if you go away from this map, this first coil, circular coil, again the it will decreases. Magnetic field will be decreases. If you went really near to this circular coil, again it will be increases. This increasing and decreasing parameter that will sh show you the strength of the magnetic field that is what the B here. Okay, and here this deflection magnetometer, what that will show you? That deflection magnetometer that will show you how much the deflection, how much the ma magnetic field will be uh, appearing towards these two coils. Okay, and initially while going, if you went with the experimental. Uh, phenomena with respect to that you should have to see that three steps very important three steps you should have to know the number of turns with respect to these coils okay and as well as you should have to set the uh, basis of this uh, the, uh, this uh, circular uh, this experimental setup and as well as you should have to know that whether uh, this deflection magnetometer this is a uh, that is that must be in the center of these two coils Okay, this is a very basic thing uh, while uh, performing the experiment. Okay, so this is what, how the Malmoz galometer it will box. Okay, and finally, you should have to know that with respect to that deflection, as I said, that the, this magnetometer that will shows you the, in which angle that will be deflecting. Okay, so with respect to that angle, you should have to substitute in this uh, formula and from that you will get that how much the current is uh, flowing uh, through these coils that is what i is equals to k tan theta if you if you come with the first coil means with respect to that you will get the i1 if you come with the second coil means with respect to that you will get the i2 you may consider this one as the i1 is equals to k tan theta and same as i2 is equals to k uh, k tan theta okay and thereafter after getting the all the values, finally we will get like this graph. Okay, and here what it will show you, then this it will give you a resultant magnetic field. Is that right? It will give you B1 and it will give you P2. Is that right? The resultant means what? The average of these two magnetic fields that will give you a total magnetic field, which is with respect to this Helmholtz galvanometer. Okay, so this is what all about the Helmholtz galometer, that the theory and working condition and with respect to the derivation of this current also. Okay, so 
this is what the end of this class okay thank you